All right, everybody. And this is going to be our training on how to write a lesson plan. First things first, let me share my screen. Um, when everybody gets their OneDrive link and you open it, it should look like this. Hopefully yours is a little bit faster than my old computer. And for the purposes of this training, I'm just going to focus on every place we need to go to get our lesson plan done. Okay. So right here where it says 41 uh, documents inside of it, this is the one that I go to. Um, some of the files and folders can be a little repetitive, but this is my go-to. Um, and then I go to lesson plans. And then it's right here, like lesson template. And then you're going to open up the one that says GK for our school, George White Camor. Every school um, has either their initials or their name on it. So this is going to be ours because when you open it, it's going to have our name on it. Um, at this point, you could download the document onto your computer. Um, and if you don't have a device to download or to um, do it this way, you are always welcome to go down to the office and pick up a bunch of blank lesson plans that look like this. They'll print them out for you um, to make sure that you have the resources that you need. Okay, so I have already downloaded mine and I am going to switch over, let me see. Do, 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 new share, uh, do, 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 learning how to do this. There we go, share that. Okay, this is our lesson plan sheet. Do not be intimidated, I am gonna walk you through it. Um, what do we need first? Well, we can't have a title if we don't have an idea. And where do we get our ideas? Well the internet. So let's go back over there. And our go-to at Give Every Child a Chance is, let me see, going to be Pinterest. Me. There it is. Um, Usually, all you got to do is type in GeekAC, and we pop up. We have our own uh, board, and a bunch of ideas go here. I know for my personal Pinterest, I have my own board that I've created. Um, you might want to do that, too. Um, just create your own Pinterest and go on there and just... Good, just, you know, you can have the TV on in the background, listen to music, and I just go. I just put all my ideas there, whether it's for PE, enrichment stuff, uh, academic stuff for our academic people, like any ideas that even remotely entertain you or you think our kids would love to do. Because, you know, it's very important that you love what you're doing, too. So this is the place. This is the GeekHack one, and I encourage you to create your own. For the purposes of this training, I'm going to go ahead and open up enrichment. But whatever I do can also be applied with PE. Um, let's open up this. And I had already picked out something that I wanted to do earlier, something I thought would be cool for when we get back with the kids. But, I mean, any idea you could think of is on here, whether you want to Look at superhero projects and um, oh, that's cute. Animal habitats and how they live, which we can always show videos on with our kids because we have our projector and the iPads. I mean, really, it's endless. Um, but the one that I'm going to focus on, just to get back on track, is, sorry if you're getting a little dizzy, here it is. Silhouette. 
I thought this would be really cool for the kids to just talk about how they feel or what's in their head when they get back and uh, make a little project out of it. Now there's all different types of silhouettes and you can always modify to make it a little bit more difficult for the older students or a little bit easier. So I always like to start off with something that is easy peasy. So, cause I always modify for the older kids. I can always add on. Um, and put that in my notes in the lesson plan. So I chose this one. It's pretty simple. You have a light source, you got a student or a kid there, somebody's kid, and you know, they're just gonna trace the shadow. So let's go see all the materials that we need. So DIY family silhouette art. Now we have the name of our lesson and we're gonna go down and see what the materials are. Let's see what we need. Uh, paper, pencil or a Sharpie, tape, scissors, light source. Frame is optional to me. All right, seems easy enough. So let's go switch back to our lesson plan and start filling out some stuff that we already know we need. Title of the lesson plan. Silhouette art. Date. We don't know the date because we're living in those types of times. Grade that it applies to is going to be all of them. Remember, um, you can modify. There's some people that write two different lesson plans depending on um, the difficulty, like science projects and stuff like that, that have to be heavily modified, really intricate, um, difficult things. Sometimes people will do a lesson plan for the older kids and then have something completely different set up for the youngers. So it um, just depends on how you're rolling, but we're keeping it simple today. All right, anybody remember what we needed? We needed scissors. Okay. Definitely needed some white paper. Uh, we needed tape. We needed a pencil or a Sharpie. And we also needed a light source. Light source. That could be a flashlight. I know I got a couple of those little lamps in my house that I'll probably bring for it. Little lamp. All right. Done. And I'm thinking that there's going to be uh, just extra construction paper too. So we definitely need white paper, but also we're just going to need some extra construction paper for the background. So. Uh, the kids choose their own colors. What's the lesson objective? Well, our kids are gonna be working in teams, so they're definitely gonna need some teamwork. Good communication skills. They are definitely gonna need some tracing skills. And for our older ones, um, our younger ones, they might need to be guided a little bit through the process of talking about their feelings if we're going to extend the project to adding words into the silhouette. So sometimes, uh, let me see, I think I would put your, like, teaching them some social emotional learning, okay? Um, they're not every kid's going to want to talk about their feelings and stuff, but that's, we can guide them and they don't have to, they can, you know, say they want to sit that portion of it out, but social and emotional learning is what I'm going to put because I'm shooting for big, big goals. Okay. This part right here, every part here 
learning that supports mastery, skill building, learning that creates diversity, all of these, every time you do a lesson plan, your goal is to have all of those checked off. Now, when you, when you have a hard copy, um, you could just put a little X to it, ne X next to it or circle it. Um, just because I'm on the computer, I'm going to highlight it. And even though Oscar says it makes him blind, um, I like it. Uh, you want to hit all these points. And if you are going through your lesson plan and you, you're saying to yourself, maybe I'm not hitting that, you know, learning that is collaborative. Um, why? You know, I, I, I encourage you to, to, to make sure that the lesson plan is hitting all of these things. Like it, they, they, uh, they're there to remind you that these are the goals uh, that we should be uh, teaching our kids. You know, when I first started, I would think about it a lot. I'm like, well, I know it's usually hitting, it's expanding horizon or it's teaching a healthy choice. And I felt so like, I can't circle all of these. There's no reason why you can't highlight all of these. Um, figure out why, you know, what, what do you need to do to hit all of them? Okay. And for the purposes of, of this particular lesson, we're going to be putting that our source came from a website. Um, so I'm just going to go back here. And get that website real quick. Copy and paste it. And believe me, once you do like two or three of these, it's gonna be it's gonna be easy peasy. Cause you're already gonna know exactly what you need to do. Right? Now, if we're at school and we're not, but <laughs> if we're at school and we have access to all of our binders our thematic unit binders, our Every Monday Matters books, um, all the other things that we have that um, have information, it's for our lesson plans, we'd be putting that curriculum down. If you are running PE and you're writing a lesson plan, you'd be putting down the Sparks binder here. You'd be putting down the catch box, that blue box that has all those little cards in it um, with the PE ideas. And you'd be putting down the number the pay of the page that you're getting the information from right here or the number on the index card from the catch box right here because it's a curriculum okay um if i was doing the every monday matters book uh which just has a bunch of ideas for your kids on a monday to get them involved in um, community projects or talking about their feelings it's really cool i would put down every monday matters here but because I'm getting my idea from this website, that's what I'm putting there. All right. We're almost done. You guys are doing great. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So now I'm going to go back to the steps. They want us to find a black blank wall in your home. So we're just gonna switch that to find a blank wall in the classroom. And project the light onto it and trace the shadow, right? Trace the silhouette, pretty easy. I'm gonna take this copy it Put a one down, and I'm going to paste it. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Find a blank wall in your class. Better not be at my house. That's big enough to project light in order to create a clear silhouette image for tracing. Now, the thing I'm going to change about this is that I want students to get into teams. So 
I'm just going to change that real quick. Uh, find like one or class <clears throat> that's big enough to project light or create a clear silhouette image for tracing. Have students get into teams of two. They can take turns, take turns tracing each other's silhouette. All right. Boom. So the reason why I copied and pasted it over, I mean, there's always going to have to be adjustments that need to be made, um, but it's just easier than going back and forth, uh, and then I could just make the changes over here. Okay, two. What's next? I'm gonna tape it up on the wall. While your child sits or stands in front of the matte paper tape to the wall, project your light onto your child in order to create a shadow on the wall, just the light or just the child or light where you need. Okay. You can use any light source around the home. No projector is needed. As long, oh, we can, wait a minute, you can't use the projector. Oh, that would be really cool. As long as the light is bright enough to cast a shadow. We use the lamp, okay. So, we're still cool. Remove the paper from the wall and carefully cut out the silhouette. All right. go back so they could take turns tracing each other's silhouette left hands get teams of two so we have the light portion up there I wonder if it okay so I'm just gonna put this one in since we already talked about projecting the light um, on there and then taking the turns tracing each other's silhouette so we don't need to have all the other things that she was talking about so remove the paper from the wall and carefully cut out the silhouette using your scissors easy peasy okay and step four depending on the color you would like for your final silhouette to be retrace the white image to the color of your choosing. Oh, so this is just saying you could put a background on your silhouette. Once you have your final image, trace into the paper, carefully cut one more time. Oh, huh. cool. Taper, glue the image. All right. So this is pretty easy. So let's finish it up. Students can choose a different background color for the silhouette they cut out. out. Then, then cut. Oops, their chosen color to the shape of the silhouette. Silhouette. All right. Tape, whoops, both papers for, wait, tape both papers together for a cool shadow effect. Oh, wait, no. 
that's what it's gonna look like. Tape both papers together for a cool shadow border. Nice. Okay. Now, here's the part where I like to put in extra notes in case you do need to modify, just as a reminder, because it's gonna be a while before we actually implement these lessons, right? So this is just a little reminder. Older students. Can, and I'm getting these ideas from the other Pinterest silhouette things I saw um, that would be really good for our older students. Um, older students can put different emotions. And thoughts inside their silhouette. Younger students can draw little thought. Whoops. Hot bubbles or pictures. And that's a wrap, Jack. That's about it. Um, I could save some space by doing that so it doesn't go onto the second paper, but that's about it. There's your lesson plan. We're going to be talking about course sta uh, standards, common course standards, in, a, in another video. Um, that one's going to be shorter. Um, but it's important because that's how we get our grant money. So we have to state um, clearly what common core standards we're, we're hitting. But that's, you find the common core, it's like a little um, code that you put in, a little paragraph that you put in, you just copy and paste it. I have the link for it. Um, but I want you guys to look over this and if there's any questions, let me know. Um, but that's about it. All right. Let's see. Do, 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 do. All right. All right. Thank you.